Have you ever been offshore struggling to catch bass, and then all of a sudden the bite seems to turn on out of nowhere? You're catching them almost every cast and it's a blast. But then just as fast as it started, the bite completely dies and you go back to catching no fish. This is something that happens all the time and there's actually key feeding windows and bite windows in offshore bass fishing that you can predict. And I'm gonna explain them in this video. Let's get into it. In our last video, we explained how to target inactive bass offshore. In that video, we explained that bass are more likely to feed when they're setting up on top of a ledge or a drop-off, and then they're more inactive or less likely to feed when they're suspended over the creek channel. What I didn't explain in that video is what triggers the bass to actually move up on top of these ledges or drops and get into that feeding mode. Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through all the different weather conditions and timings and factors that can lead these bass into that feeding mode, and that way you can target them and put a lot of fish in the boat. Let's start by explaining feeding windows on bright sunny days. The first feeding window happens right at sunrise, right when that sun comes over the horizon. It's common knowledge that there's a good morning bite up shallow, and a lot of guys will go fish in shallower water right at sunrise and forget about the offshore bass. However, there is actually a really good feeding window offshore right when that sun comes over the horizon because the bait fish are going to be moving up and feeding on offshore structure and cover right as that sun rises, just like they do up around shallow cover. This is a bite that I take advantage of a lot because there are fewer guys fishing offshore right at sunrise, and I can basically have those offshore fish completely to myself for the first hour or two of the day. This morning feeding window lasts about an hour to an hour and a half after sunrise, and then you kind of get a lull where the bass will get in an inactive mode and start suspending over the creek channels. This lasts till about 11 o'clock to noon on most fishing days. After this morning lull, there's going to be a key one hour feeding window between noon and 3 p.m. This will fluctuate depending on the time of year that you're fishing, also the time zone you're in, but across the board it's usually between that noon and 3 p.m. time. In that time, there's going to be that one hour window when the shad are going to move back up on top of the ledges or on top of the drops and the bass will follow them. The bright sunny skies will cast shadows around big objects underwater, like a brush pile or a boulder, and the bass will use these shadows to ambush bait fish during that key one hour feeding window. But unfortunately, just as fast as that one hour feeding window starts, it's also going to end, and those bass will go back to an inactive mode. Now if you're fishing around an area like a brush pile, there are times when a few bass might stay behind around that brush pile, and you can still catch them if you really work hard with a finesse bait, but it's oftentimes harder to get those fish to bite. And again, we made a whole video explaining how to target inactive bass on these offshore areas in our last video, so definitely check that one out if you're interested. To wrap up these sunny days, we have one more key feeding window an hour before the sun sets. I'm not talking about when the sun actually sets and it gets really dark. It's that golden hour before sunset, about an hour beforehand. For whatever reason, the bait fish get active in that time of day, and that bite will last about an hour before the sun sets, right until it sets, and then it kind of dies again. Let's also talk about the baits that I throw during these active feeding windows on sunny days. During the sunrise and sunset periods of the day when those fish are up, actively feeding because of the low light conditions on the sunny days, I like to throw a deep diving crankbait. It allows me to cover water, try to find those active groups of fish quickly, and there's two crankbaits I throw more often than not. The first is the Mega Bass Deep X 300 crankbait. This has a great weight transfer system that I can fire a mile, cover a lot of water with, and as long as you're fishing around rock and not a lot of brush, this bait really will not get hung up. I can grind it in four feet of water and I can fish it out to 12 to 15 feet as well. So even though it's a little bit pricier of a bait, it makes up for it in the fact that it comes through rocks and things really well. And it also will cast a lot further than any other crankbait this size. It allows me to kind of have one crankbait in the deck of the boat that covers anything from four feet out to 12 to 15 feet, super versatile lure right here. Now, if I'm fishing around a lot more brush, I'm usually going to switch over to the Striking 6XD crankbait. Not only does it come through brush a little bit better than that Deep X 300, but it's also like a third of the price, so that's very helpful. And what I find is that 
if you're with a really heavy wind and stuff, the 6XD won't cast quite as well as that Deep X300. And it also doesn't work quite as well up in those really shallow rocky areas. So I'll usually just pick this up when I'm fishing around brush and I feel like I'm gonna get hung up. So that's kind of my other go-to crankbait. I'll throw both those on a Denali Covert Light, seven foot six, medium heavy power crankbait rod, moderate action. And I'll crank those on anything from 12 to 15 pound monofilament line. I need to do a video about why I crank with mono, and I'll do that here in the near future because there is a lot of reasons, and David Fritz, Crank and Lenjid does it too, so I'm not the only one. And then if I'm cranking as well, and I need to get a little bit deeper, let's say in that 20 to 25 foot range, also pick up a Striking 10XD just because it's one of the few crankbaits that gets that deep, and this is a great bait in rock and in brush if you need to fish really, really deep. Now, that was when you're in those sunrise, early morning periods of the day. But if you're in scenarios where you have the sunny skies and no wind, and you're also up in the middle of the day where the fish are on brush and things like that, then I like to go with some slower moving baits. Even though those bass are actively feeding, you don't necessarily need to be fishing moving baits or aggressive baits. Instead, I like to go with a bigger profile bait that will still work with those aggressive bass, but it's just a little bit slower. My two go-tos are a football jig. This is the uh, Fish the Moment Offshore Jig by Jewel Bait Company. Works really well through brush, through rock, and it gives a big profile to those bass. I'll pair that with a, a Jewel Bait Versacraw Junior on the back. It's a really versatile trailer on this jig, and you can fish this thing on those sunny days when those bass are up, actively feeding around rocks and brush, and they'll absolutely crush it. It is a pretty beefy bait with a pretty big skirt on it, so it's one of those deals that if the fish are not actively feeding, it may not be the best option. Instead, you might need to go to like a shaky head or something like that, but when they are actively feeding, a football jig is a great option for some big bass. Another bait that works great in those active feeding periods is a big 10-inch worm. This is the Zoom Old Monster Worm. That big worm is a little more subtle than the football jig, and sometimes if the fish are in a weird mood but still actively feeding, they'll bite the big worm better than the football jig. Just kind of takes some experimentation. I usually just switch between the Zoom Old Monster with a you know, 3 8 ounce tungsten weight and this 5 aught Gamakatsu EWG hook, and I'll throw this sometimes, throw the football jig, maybe alternate them cast after cast, see which one they want to bite, and usually one of those will put them in the boat if they're actively feeding when it's sunny skies and no wind. Now, if the wind picks up in the afternoon around those offshore areas and it's sunny, you can still catch them on a crankbait as well. That wind really does get these fish more aggressive, and you can a lot of times catch multiple fish on multiple casts with this crankbait. I've even doubled up sometimes two fish on one crankbait, so that's pretty fun. So that's kind of my baits for the sunny conditions in those active feeding windows. Next, we have cloudy days. And the feeding windows on these cloudy days is going to differ from sunny days because, well, there's no sun. And what I find is that the sky conditions don't have that much impact on these feeding windows. And the key factor instead is going to be wind. In my opinion, the most difficult conditions for offshore bass fishing is when you have cloudy skies and no wind. In these conditions, the bass tend to roam a lot and also suspend, not setting up around objects or cover, which makes them very difficult to target. Now, you can target these fish a little bit more reliably now with forward-facing sonar like LiveScope, but that's still a very tricky way to actually fish, and it's not something I would recommend to a new offshore angler. This means that if you're going to be fishing offshore on cloudy days, you need something that's going to trigger those bass to move up into the shallower water areas and relate around cover. In this case, it's usually going to be wind. In this example, we have calm, cloudy conditions from sunrise to 2 p.m., putting the bass in a suspended, inactive mode. However, between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., the wind really starts picking up, maybe getting as strong as 10 to 15 miles an hour. This is going to push the fish up on top of the drops with the bait fish and put them around cover. The bass will ambush these bait fish because of the current caused by the wind, and you're going to have a lot more success in catching these fish offshore. However, if that wind dies, for example, around 4 p.m. and it goes back to being calm, those bass are going to again move off the drop and suspend, making them difficult to target if you don't know exactly what you're doing with forward-facing sonar. Because the offshore feeding windows on cloudy days are so dependent on wind, I don't recommend that new offshore anglers start trying to learn offshore fishing on cloudy days. 
Instead, it's much easier to learn how to fish offshore on sunny days. The sun is going to make the feeding windows a little bit more predictable. It's also going to position the bass better around cover like brush piles and rock piles, which are pretty easy to find with your fish finder. If you do want to fish offshore on those cloudy days, make sure that you focus heavily on those windy periods of the day. And if there's not that much wind, don't get discouraged and give up offshore because there are still ways to catch them with live scope and things like that, which I'll get into in other videos on this channel. But also you can just abandon the offshore bite and go shallow for those periods of cloudy skies and no wind, and then jump back offshore when the wind picks up. Next, let's talk about the baits I throw in cloudy conditions during those active feeding windows. Again, normally those active feeding windows are triggered by the wind. So you're going to want to wait till that wind picks up offshore and then those fish will pull up on top of offshore ledges, humps, and other structure spots. In those conditions, honestly, my one and only go-to bait is going to be a crankbait. I've gone through all of these already earlier in this video, but if those windy conditions happen on the cloudy days and those fish get active, just pick up a crankbait, throw it around those offshore areas, and you're gonna put a lot of fish in the boat. Again, the Mega Bass Deep X 300 is great around rock, and when you want to fish maybe a little bit shallower offshore, and then when you want to get around brush, you can go to the Striking 6XD. If you want to fish a little bit deeper than that, out to 20 feet, go to the 10XD, and you're good to go. The last factor that impacts feeding windows offshore is current flow. In this case, I'm talking about man-made current generated from a dam. This happens on reservoirs and on the TVA chain of lakes. Current acts a lot like wind in that it will position bass around offshore cover. However, when the current is not flowing, bass tend to suspend more and be inactive. The sky conditions aren't as important on these current-oriented offshore bass because even if it's sunny or cloudy, those bass are really not worried about that. They're just going to feed based on that current schedule. The sky conditions aren't that important when you have current generation on your lake. The bass aren't as affected by sunny skies or cloudy skies, and instead those feeding windows are dictated almost completely on that current generation schedule. For example, if there's no current from sunrise to 11 a.m., those bass are going to be suspended and inactive. Then let's say the current kicks in between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. This will cause the bass to move up on top of ledges and start actively feeding. Then, after the current shuts off at 1 p.m., those bass will go back out and be suspended over the creek channel. I can't overstate the importance of current flow on offshore feeding windows on lakes that have a consistent generation schedule. That is one important thing. The lake has to have somewhat of a consistency to that current generation or current flow. There are lakes like Lake Dardanelle in the Arkansas River, for example, that will flow the same amount every single day at a certain time of day. The same thing happens on Lake Gunnersville or Pickwick on the TVA, and even on Highland Reservoirs like a Table Rock Lake when the lake is high and they're consistently pulling water down at different parts of the day. The key is that you need to find out when those current generation periods are. And you can find them on websites like the TVA website or the Coosa River chain where they'll show how many gates are open and how much current is flowing. You can just search current flow and then your lake name and you can usually find those current generation schedules and you want to look at those often to figure out when those key windows are. One example I can share is from a college regional championship that won on Lake Dardanelle. I was fishing a main river offshore shell bed and the current was flowing at 11 o'clock to noon every single day. I actually pulled up on the spot first hour of the morning and only caught one small fish, a 14 incher, and left. I then came back right as the current was flowing and caught 19 pounds and won the tournament. The difference was that I fished first in the morning when there was no current and literally caught one small fish. This is a really important concept to understand, especially for new offshore anglers. Again, I pulled up on that spot first hour of the morning and only got one bite, a 14 incher. Most guys would think that that spot is just not that good that day and not fished again. But I knew better because I knew those feeding windows happened at 11 o'clock and then I then returned to that area and caught 19 pounds just a few hours later. The difference between catching fish offshore can sometimes be just a timing deal. Some parts of the day will be better to catch those fish offshore, and other times they can be almost impossible to catch. Really quick, if you're enjoying the detailed instruction in this video, then head to our website, fishthemoment.com, and check out our virtual seminars page. 
Here you'll find seminar recordings from past seminars we've done on a variety of bass fishing topics from seasonal bass movement, electronics, offshore bass fishing, and how weather affects bass. These are three hour seminars with extremely detailed graphics and instruction that we spent hours putting together so that they're extremely clear and impactful. If you want to take your fishing to the next level and enjoy the content on this channel, definitely check out our virtual seminars because I know you'll love the content. Check them out at fishthemoment.com. Finally, we'll talk about the baits that I like to throw when the current is rolling and those fish get active because of the current. The current is kind of interesting because sometimes it will get those fish really aggressive and make them want to eat a bait like a crankbait. But if the current isn't quite strong enough, they may be still feeding, but they're not necessarily chewing. And in that case, you need to go to a bait like a football jig and drag it around those same areas. I actually would recommend trying both the crankbait and either like a jig or a worm on those current related fish offshore because usually some days they'll bite the crankbait better some days they'll bite the worm better and in the example i gave earlier about the spot where i was catching them offshore on those ledges one day i went out there and caught five fish and five casts on a strike king 6xd crankbait and absolutely hammered them and then the next day i came back and they wouldn't eat it wouldn't touch it at all and i actually had to pick up the 10 inch worm drag that around and i ended up picking up 17 pounds the next time i fished it just dragging the worm nice and slow the current was flowing the exact same on both days. It was sunny and calm both days. I don't know why they wanted the worm one day and the crankbait the other. So just experiment, don't get tied into one bait. But as you can see, I really only have five baits here that I fish for these active offshore bass. And if you're just getting into offshore fishing, I would highly recommend just trying to target these active feeding windows and use the baits I mentioned here. You got three different crankbaits, a big worm, a football jig. That's all you really need to get started offshore. That's how I learned to fish offshore. Don't make it too complicated on yourself. And then once you start learning how to catch fish on these baits in those active feeding windows, you can switch over to catching some of those suspended bass on other baits I talked about in some recent videos with the hair jigs, the flutter spoons, all these other baits. I got all these down here on the other side of the boat. And those are baits that work really well also. And it's something if you wanna fish offshore all day, you definitely wanna learn. But if you're just out there trying to get started offshore, pick up these few baits I've talked about in this video, find those active feeding windows, and you're gonna catch some good fish. Now again, there are ways to target and catch suspended offshore bass outside of those key feeding windows, but it's much more difficult than when those bass are actively feeding, and it requires a lot more knowledge and skill in offshore bass fishing to actually pull that off. For newer anglers, it's much better to actually figure out those feeding windows and just go fish when those bass are biting because you're going to have a lot more success and a lot more fun instead of trying to beat your head against a brick wall trying to figure out exactly how to get those inactive bass to bite. There's been days where I sat on one offshore spot all day long and caught maybe one or two fish in those inactive periods and then when the feeding window happened, I would catch 15 fish in 20 minutes. This is something you kind of have to learn as you fish more offshore, when to stay or when to leave on a spot, when those feeding windows are happening, and it's all part of the learning process to become a better offshore angler. Hopefully this video though gives you some good ideas about what to look for on the lake in terms of when those feeding windows are happening, and it'll hopefully help you put more fish in the boat this year offshore. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like down below and also subscribe to the Fishing Moment YouTube channel for consistent uploads about offshore bass fishing and electronics. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you all next one.